I stared in confusion at the ice block, not believing my eyes. What should I do, Emma? I asked. I don't know. Hit it? I began to slap the ice. Then I began to punch. Each hit increased in intensity as I let out my frustration of what Tomas did. David, stop! Stop! She cried. I stopped and looked at my hands. Ouch. Yeah, that would have hurt. Did the ice crack? She asked. I looked at the ice while holding my hands. No, it's as hard as a rock. Well, how are we going to break this? She asked, asking the question in my head as well. I paused, trying to think of a solution. I looked at some nearby pieces of clothing, remembering that Emma used them last night to warm her feet. Maybe if, maybe if I wrap these around your feet, it could warm up the ice slowly. Maybe, David, but I don't know. I began to wrap the clothing around the ice block and above the ice up to her knees. However, as I did this, a new idea popped in, into my head. What if I started a campfire? That way, if the clothing wrapping fails, we could warm up the ice with fire. Good idea, David. You have the matches, right? She asked. Yep, I should have them, I said. I then left Emma's tent and went to my tent. Man, I was not expecting to start the morning out like this. It truly surprised me, but I think it surprised Emma more, obviously. I began looking for the matches. I checked where I had last put them in the bag, but they weren't there. I checked in the rest of my bag, wondering if I had put them somewhere else. I spent about five minutes searching for these matches. Hey, Emma, I must have misplaced the matches. You did what? She called out. I lost the matches. We'll keep looking for them. We need that fire. Doing as I was told, I kept searching for the matches. I began to reflect on the situation while I was searching. I was helping Emma. Only a day ago, I had put an ultimatum in front of her, where she had had to admit that she had lost a recent argument. How was it that I was now helping her? There was a part of me that just wanted her to, to let her suffer, but that was my pride talking. Sure, she could be annoying. But is that really enough for her to lose her feet to the cold? Absolutely not. The brotherly side was in me today, and I wasn't about to let my sister suffer. After about 15 minutes of searching, tearing apart my tents for the matches, Emma called me over. What is it, Emma? I asked while coming to her tent. David, I think the ice is spreading. Look. I opened the tent and looked inside. I looked at the ice covering her feet. Emma had removed some of the clothing. I looked to see if the ice had truly spread, and I saw it now up to her shins, nearing her knees. Did it grow? I was wondering if I was hallucinating or if my memory was faulty. Is it now further than it was before, she asked me. Yeah, it is definitely higher than before. It was only as high as your ankles before, but now it's almost to your knees. David, what if it keeps spreading? What if it covers my entire body? There was silence for a moment as I considered the possibility. I won't let that happen, I said. I began to leave to search, to continue to search for the matches. David, have you found the matches yet? Emma asked. No, not yet. Do you know how to make a fire with only sticks, like rubbing them together? I paused. Yes, that could take like 20 minutes or half an hour. Yes, but you've spent about that much time searching. Just do it, please, she said. I frowned, but conceded. I began to find some nearby sticks and began to rub them together, just as I was taught to do. In about 20 minutes, I had a, I had a successful fire. I pulled Emma out of her tent. The ice had now climbed up and now covered her entire legs. Ice also began to cover her fingers now. It showed no signs of stopping. I laid Emma next to the fire and sat by her, trying to be a support. After about an hour or so of just sitting there in silence, not knowing what to say, I looked to see how the campfire had affected the ice. It was now up to her stomach, and now her lower arms were covered in thick ice. The fire seems to be slowing things down, but it's still growing, I said. Really? To me, it's been speeding up. I don't think the ice likes the fire, she countered. Really? I don't know. Clearly, the fire is not helping that much. We need to try something else. I'm curious if maybe there is a hint somewhere that we can solve this problem, I said. You mean like something that Tomas did? That's a good idea. What did Tomas do or say that could give us a hint? Maybe it's something with the upside down birds. Maybe you're supposed to eat a bird. That makes sense. What birds do we have that you can eat? We have chicken meals. Maybe you can eat that. I began to search for the chicken meal. David, are you okay? You're not thinking very logically, Emma said. I don't care. I need to find this chicken to save you, I cried. Can you please stop freaking out? You're freaking me out. I'm not freaking out, I said. That wasn't true. I was freaking out, but what was I supposed to do? Literally, magical ice was killing my sister. What am I to do? Just be calm about it? Eventually, I found the chicken meal, and I fed it to Emma. To be sure, it didn't really do much. The ice kept spreading up her body. I didn't know what to do. 
She didn't know what to do. We tried every logical and even illogical option. Nothing seemed to affect the ice as it covered my sister's body. Not knowing what to do, Em and I decided to stop stressing. We decided to spend the afternoon playing some games. We played card games, word games, thinking games, and almost anything that Emma and I could have fun doing. I will admit, I did have fun playing with Emma. I think once we just forgot our troubles for a moment, we could actually enjoy time together. I immediately felt guilty for how I treated my sister. She was my sister. How could I treat her so awfully? I tried to justify it because she seemed so annoying to me, but how is that an excuse? After all, she could be acting annoyingly because she doesn't like the way I've been treating her. It just leads to a never-ending cycle of disrespecting each other. And I was partially at fault for that. Emma was at fault for it too, but so was I. I should have treated her better. I'm sorry for how I treated you, Emma, I confessed. What? Oh, you're okay, De David. You don't need to worry. But I've treated you so poorly basically all my life. I'm such a fool. It's okay, David. I haven't been that great of an older sister. I didn't know what to say. It was so strange to hear that from her. I wanted to comfort her, but I didn't know what to do, so I just hugged her partially frozen body. Throughout the, throughout the afternoon, the ice had luckily slowed down a bit. It had now covered all of her body below her neck. Oh, David, you're going to make me cry. I wish I could hug you back. But Emma, what about Mom? What is she going to think about this, I asked. What, about us hugging? No about you freezing to death in Chile. I can't just tell that to mom. I don't know. I don't even want to think about it right now, David. I want my mind to be at peace right now. I thought about it for a second, then I stood up. I noticed that the sun was now beginning to set, darkness now falling. No, I'm not going to allow this to happen. There has to be a solution. I'm going to try something else. David, please, she began. No, Emma. I'm not going to give up on this. Maybe it's the ice that affects us. Let me grab some ice from Neff Glacier and bring it to you, I said. I quickly left before Emma could protest and walked over to the glacier. Not thinking about my promise not to step on the glacier, I grabbed two handfuls of ice. In just a couple minutes, I was back to Emma. I sprinkled slash threw the ice onto her, not fully knowing what I was doing, but acting out of emotion. After a few minutes, something strange happened. The ice quickly dissolved into a block of ice surrounding Emma's body. Then the ice quickly spread up the back of her head. This was the fastest that it ever spread. Now only her face wasn't covered in ice. It didn't work, didn't it? Asked Emma. No, it did not. Now my mind began to seriously worry. Night was falling and my sister was about to die.